Children at Ibamatung have no school right now. Children in Kishechewan have no proper gym. Shannon reminded us the greatest resource in this country isn't oil or diamonds. It is in the potential of this young generation. Thank you, Shannon. The fight for justice continues. The Honourable Member for Betsy Maskinonger. It's with great pride that I share with you today the renewal by UNESCO of the prestigious uh, World Biosphere Reserve status for the Lac Saint Pierre region. It's a great honor for Betsy Masquinonge and for all of Quebec. It's great to see the exceptional nature of our territory's rich biodiversity recognized in this way, and as it has been for 24 years. Thanks to uh, the great work of locals, the Lac Saint Pierre Biosphere Reserve works to reconcile human activity with the protection of our natural and cultural heritage. Faced with today's environmental challenges, we have a responsibility to adjust our policies, regulations, and practices to ensure the ongoing vitality of the ecosystems that ensure our prosperity and our quality of life. I'd like to congratulate Henri Paul Normandin and his team on the committee of the Lac Saint Pierre Zip. You can count on my support for your important mission. The Honourable Member from Stormont Dun Dundas, South Glengarry. This NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, the crime, or corruption after eight years. And the details and cost around the $60 million and counting arrive scam app gets worse by the day, Mr. Speaker. Now the NDP are pretending to be outraged by the facts being uncovered. But the truth is, when the Prime Minister needed the votes to approve the millions of dollars, he funneled the companies like GC Strategies, who did no actual work and got $20 million of taxpayers' money. It was his costly coalition partners in the NDP and the bloc that voted to prop up and allow this spending to take place, further enabling all this corruption and incompetence. The records show the NDP voted at least eight times with the Liberals to allow the arrive scam sp spending to continue. All these money-for-nothing contracts, it gets worse the more we know. The truth is the NDP refused to block this spending, and they're complicit in it. After eight years as Prime Minister and as NDP buddies, aren't worth the cost or the corruption. The Honourable Member for Vimy. Mr. Speaker, two years ago, Russia massively expanded its illegal and unprovoked attack against Ukraine. Two years later, we are commemorating those who have died defending their homeland. Courageous and audacious Ukrainians who are fighting for their identity, their democracy, their history, their language. We'll always stand with Ukraine. Besides taking in 200,000 refugees, we have provided $13 billion of military and humanitarian aid. Let's not repeat the mistakes we made before World War II. Ukrainians are fighting and dying against tyranny for all of us. To quote Churchill about the goal, it is victory, victory at all costs, victory in spite of all terror, victory, however long and hard the road may be, for without victory there is no survival. We and our allies will continue to provide aid until that victory is achieved. Slava Ukraini! Oral questions, questions on the Honourable Member from Regina Capel. While the Conservatives, the Common Sense Conservatives will abolish tax, build homes, fix the budget and stop crime, this pri Liberal Prime Minister, with the support of the Bloc, is not worth the cost or the crime or the corruption after eight years. The Bloc voted eight times to give millions to the Liberals for its Arrive Can overruns. The bloc leader knew that a rive scam would cost $80,000, but it still voted at least millions more for a rive scam. What is the bloc for? The Honourable Minister of Public Services. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, like we have done several times. This question has already received several answers, but we would like to thank the Auditor General once again for important support and her recommendations with respect to the arrive can up. The good news is most of these rec recommendations have already been implemented. We're going to continue to do this as long as possible. The Honourable Member for Regina Capel. 
the cost of arrive can't did not skyrocket all at once. The government needed votes to finance this corrupted app. And the bloc leader came to his rescue to give him his vote, not just twice, eight times. The bloc continued to vote millions extra for arrive can, and it cost a lot to vote bloc. Like the bloc leader said, we're not going to every, look at everything the government has spent in detail. What is it? What is the point of voting bloc? I see that the Minister of uh, Public Services and Procurement has risen to answer the question, but I'd like to remind all members that questions must be relevant to the government or uh, to the chair of a committee. The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I do feel rather unable to answer the question appropriately because they are for the bloc. And I hope that colleague and the leader of the Conservative Party know who they can answer, ask these questions to. Uh, nevertheless, my response is that the government during the pandemic worked to protect the health and safety of Canadians in a very urgent and extreme situation, something we haven't seen in ages. And even in the event of a crisis, all the rules do have to be respected. The Honourable Member for Regina Capel. Common sense Conservatives will axe the tax, fix the budget, build the homes and stop the crime. This NDP Liberal Prime Minister is proving that he's not worth the cost of the crime or the corruption. Now, the NDP are pretending to be outraged by the Arrive scam scandal, but the Liberals didn't have enough votes to get the funding through Parliament, so the NDP came to the rescue and eight times voted to keep funding, no-show jobs, and IT work that was never done. Common sense Conservatives voted no. Had the NDP and Bloc done the same, Arrive scam would never have happened. So does the NDP Liberal coalition deal require the NDP to fund Liberal corruption? <laughs> The Honourable Member for Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this, this question has already received multiple answers. The fact that it's coming from the former Speaker of the House, Mr. Speaker, is obviously a bit strange. He would know that if he needs to ask questions to the NDP, I am not, and we are not on this side of the good, the good people, the right people to ask, uh, to answer those questions. I would invite the, our, our colleague to ask the questions to the right people. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. Well, it's his government's deal with the NDP, Mr. Speaker. And while common sense Conservatives will axe the tax, fix the budget, build the homes and stop the crime, yeah, yeah. the NDP Liberal Prime Minister is proving that he's not worth the cost or the corruption. The Prime Minister managed to find $60 million for his Arrive scam app, but now he's going to reach into the pockets of Canadians yet again and hike the carbon tax on April 1st. Canadians are struggling with out-of-control costs and millions of Canadians are visiting the food bank for the first time. So will the Prime Minister just show some compassion and cancel his plan to hike the carbon tax? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, unlike the Conservatives who deny that climate change exists oh, and want to take money away from the Conservatives, we have a question for you, for the Conservatives in particular. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. Conservatives are going to axe the tax and not take the money out of Canadians' pockets yeah. in the first place, Mr. Speaker. And their own nonpartisan independent parliamentary budget officer has concluded that Canadians pay far more in the carbon tax than anything they hope to get back in the rebate. And on April 1st, they're going to hike it again. And something devastating is happening in Canada, Mr. Speaker. People are starting networks on social media to coordinate efforts to go dumpster diving. There's actually one in Toronto, Mr. Speaker, and the founder said the most common answer we get to the question of why do you want to join this network is too broke to afford food. Why are they hiking the carbon tax? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, 
Note that the opposition does not rebut the claim that they deny that climate change exists. Note that they are not standing up for future generations of Canadians by protecting sustainability and acting on climate change. But I want to say, Mr. Speaker, the inflation numbers have come down below 3%. Yes. Our government is continuing to put money back in the pockets of Canadians, and we will be there for Canadians, offering support to the most vulnerable Canadians while the Conservatives vote against every single time. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Those who were worried about the love affair between the Liberals and the NDP can rest assured it will continue until 2025. Weddings are expensive, no question about it. But above all, it's, it's all about pleasing Quebecers, not Quebecers' priorities. Quebecers didn't ask for daycare, we already have them. Quebecers didn't ask for federal dental coverage, we already have that. Quebecers didn't ask for drug coverage, we already have that too. How much more is it going to cost us to insure our two lovebirds for programs that aren't even Quebec's priorities? <laughs> The Honourable Minister of Innovation, Mr. Speaker, better off if Quebec uh, has been a leader in social coverage. Yes, we've taken inspiration for health cares from Quebec and in terms of dental care. Yes, we have we taken inspiration from Quebec every time we take initiatives that will bring Canada to have more services for Canadians. And, Mr. Speaker, what surprises me when I hear the block this morning— it, is not to talk about investment, or like the one in Laval this week. Canada has will have the most modern factory here in Quebec, and we are concerned about the safety and security of Canadians. The Honourable Member for La Prairie, it's own, if only Liberal NDP health insurance improved health care. But a year since the forced agreement on health transfers, not a penny has been paid to Quebec because Ottawa is imposing its conditions. Eleven months since Quebec demanded the right to opt out of federal dental coverage, and still nothing. Today, our lovebirds are adding a third long-term squabble over drug coverage. And meanwhile, not a single Quebecer is getting better care. Instead of scheming to stay in power, why not put money back in the pockets of Quebecers so we can treat our people? The Honourable Minister of Health, Mr. Speaker, clearly the bloc is trying to create squabbles, but we are looking for solutions. And that is the reason why we're having good conversations with Minister Dubé and the Quebec government. It's a question of enhancing health care transfers, and it's clear. It is essential for all Quebecers to have access to dental care for a solid health care system. And this is possible with a spirit of cooperation and not with squabbles like this or debates like this. The Honourable Member from Burnaby South. People are getting ripped off by corporate grocery stores in this country. And in the north, it's on another level. One liter of olive oil costs $36. Now, the federal government subsidizes corporations working in the north with a program called Nutrition North. The Nutrition North gives millions of dollars of subsidies to these companies. These companies take a third of it and don't pass it on to consumers. So will the Liberal government reform Nutrition North so the benefit goes to the people, not to the CEOs of corporations working in the North? Here, here, here. The Honourable Minister for Northern Affairs. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for that very important question. Our government is absolutely committed to ensuring that 100 percent of the subsidy, of the retail subsidy, is passed directly to Northerners. We know that prices are too high in the North, and we have worked, we'll continue to work with uh, territorial governments, with Indigenous partners, and more importantly, people who live in the North and the Arctic to make progress. Progress has been made, but there's a lot of work to do. Here, here. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. The program is an abject failure. Yeah, right. clear que les entrepreneurs Clearly, big grocery in the north it, are ripping people off, and the government, through its 